Aaron. You can hear my voice now, I know. Tomorrow's a holiday, that's why I'm on tonight. I didn't realize that. I mean, I realized it, but I wasn't thinking. So, I thought tomorrow was a school day. So I was like, come on tonight. So how many of you were on earlier today? Just a work day, yeah. It's always a work day for me. Man, that, that acoustic guitar, that's a tendonitis guitar right there, I'll tell you that. That'll, uh, that's brutal. My arm hurts from it still. It's weird because the high E strings got, uh, that just developed a buzz. And uh, I gotta get uh, I gotta get a new nut cut for it, and get all that get that guitar fixed. Thirteens, Kinch, woof. And the action's high on it too. It's not low. I mean, it's it's uh, it's a beast to play, but it's um, but it's you know it's kind of nice to fight against it a little bit. When I play the electric guitar. It's so easy. It's uh, you know. Gotta have a little bit of, uh, gotta be able to dig into it a little bit. Vikings won, Eric. Vikings playing home today? Must have been cold if they were. Shane, if you have fat fingers, you need low action. No. Fat fingers, you can have, uh, you can have high action. If I ever had a neck snap on me, that's, it, that's a, that's a good question. Um, um, I don't know if I, um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I've ever had a neck snap on me. I tell you, I have, uh, one of the funniest stories ever. We were playing, my old band was playing this place called the Nick in Birmingham. And, uh, what's up, Nicholas? And there was this guitar, this band that was opening, that we were opening for. And the guitar player was a complete idiot. He was coming up and giving us a hard time. They wouldn't let us sound check. So he had his Les Paul sitting on a... What's up, Nari? He has Les Paul sitting on a stand. And he had one of those stands that doesn't that didn't have a, a you know one of the rubber latches on it, right? He was walking across stage after sound check. He tripped on his cord. And the guitar fell right over and snapped the headstock off. I laughed so hard. It was amazing. I mean, he just was holding the headstock like this with the strings hanging off it. It was great. The guy was such a jerk. <laughs> but a Gibson will do that. You drop a Les Paul, any any Gibsons, because the uh, because the way I don't know about if the acoustic would do that. It probably would. <coughs> but um, any Les Paul. Any SG, if it falls straight down on the uh, on the strings, um, it will be it will be gone. And you know the funny thing is, when they uh, when when they're when they've been fixed, the uh, headstock is a lot more stable. Um, I always thought about looking on eBay for uh, for guitars headstocks that have been broken to um, to see if uh, you can get a good deal on them. Because you know they're out there. But uh, I never think. <coughs> I never, uh, I'm never looking for guitars anyways. But I am definitely looking for a jazz guitar at some point. I can't, um, uh, I can't, uh, I can't keep playing the acoustic guitar, man. That's just, that's just un unbearable. It's very, very, uh, very hard. I've had... Yukus, I've had a um, I've had a guitar fall. I've had a Gibson fall and it did not break. It fell. On, I had it fall on a on a carpet, but um, uh, but even then it can it can they can still break. 
It's amazing. There must be just so much tension up there. They made a 175 years ago that uh, they had this weird lip on it. They, were, they weren't the good 175s. But I had this extra piece on the back of the neck, a reinforcement there, and it looked hideous. And um, I don't think they did it for very long, but um, but it was um, it definitely reinforced. Uh, but you got to be really it's a volute. Is that what they call that? Your SG fell on a carpet, still in one piece. Yeah. Got to be really careful. I'm surprised, that, honestly. I've never that I haven't broken one in here. I never lead the. Uh, I never leave a cord plugged into the stuff. And nowadays, all the all the uh, guitar stands are sideways. You know, like this. They don't. You know. I mean, I've got the ones, but this is the. Uh, these kind of guitar stands are obviously much better for. You know, where the guitars don't don't tip over. Easily. Um, so, and that's pretty much the, those are pretty much the guitar stands that uh, that everybody plays nowadays or that everybody uses nowadays. I never play out, so I don't have to worry about it. There's a YouTuber who made a video called "Gibson sells guitars with pre-broken headstocks." He went to their site, zoomed in SG from their catalog, and lo and behold, it cracked new. There you go. <laughs> Um, I had a friend that used to build base upright bases out of PVC pipe. I see that he had um he had a uh, he put bass strings on this thing. He put a put a pickup on it. it. Was an upright the thing sounded great. Came down to a T. He went to Home Depot and put it together and put tuning heads on it. Just a a pipe, just a pipe of uh, you know PVC pipe. And he was there playing it. it was awesome. Anyways, um, let's see here. What, what are we going to talk about tonight? So uh, one thing I want to talk about, you guys noticed my video got taken down last night. And last night's stream, you know what it was? Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. It was blocked. They don't mess around. Stairway to Heaven. You know, look at all the stuff I've played. I played all these other big. Um, I played all these other big records and everything. And uh, Stairway to Heaven. They don't, Warner Brothers does not mess around, or whoever owns that. Uh, Atlantic. Well, Warner Brothers Atlantic. It said. Um, let me look it up here at YouTube. It said, I got a different message than I normally get. Uh, it said, um, a copyright claim. It was the first copyright claim. It said, um, it said, uh, copyright, due to copyright claim, YouTube, your YouTube video has been blocked. Okay? This means your video can no longer be played on YouTube. Video title. Copyright content, Stairway to Heaven, WMG. View claim details. I didn't hit claim details, but um, let's see what it says. Uh, well, it doesn't really say anything. It's, um, that's it. You know, the other, uh, it's interesting. So WMG is Warner Music Group. So that's the other, uh, that's the other big, um, that's the other big company. UMG doesn't take them down. The only other time, um, I'm trying to think when I had that one taken down, no, no, UMG does. Cause it was the ECM one, the Keith Jarrett. Um, but Led Zeppelin, that was the first one. And that wasn't the first thing I played, but, uh, immediately, immediately got taken down. I, what I think it is, I think that Zeppelin, um, when they agreed to have their music on on uh, on iTunes and on streaming services, that they they had a lot of conditions to it. Uh, I mean, they, if you remember, they were one of the first last last bands to uh, or a late band to have their stuff put on iTunes. 
Um, so, yeah, I know, Kinch, the back in the saddle was amazing. Uh, but, yeah, they, uh, <laughs> weenie money grabbers, WMG, they don't mess with that. That's, uh, that was the first one. There were other copyright claims, obviously, for back in the set. All the other ones had copyright claims, but they, um, but they didn't do anything about it. So, um, all covers of Stairway to Heaven are muted in YouTube. Is that true? Is that actually, Mariano, is that actually true? Because, uh, because that's, that's really unbelievable. I played Stairway to Heaven, I think, in some video, didn't I? Didn't I play the, uh. Um, every tutorial gets taken down. Everyone does Led Zeppelin tutorial gets taken down. Wow. Wow. That's, you know, I did this guitar thing. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Cause I did a guitar thing and I played the ocean. I played all these things. It didn't get taken down. Uh, well, I didn't play the whole song though. I just played the riffs. I'm trying to think if I've played any. I don't think I've played any other Zeppelin, honestly, on here. Have I? I don't. I don't remember playing any Zeppelin. Uh, Zeppelin has ripped off songs and played their own. Okay, I want to let. I want to go back to the Radiohead thing just for a second here. Uh, I thought about this. I talked with a couple friends of mine uh, about it. So you know, Radiohead's denying this lawsuit. Lana Del Rey is saying, yes, they, they want their percentage. But I said last night that the publishing company is the one that decides to go after um, the, the, uh, the other publishing company for the royalties. So, But typically, any band like Radiohead that signed a publishing deal back then, they were on Capitol Records first. Um, they would have signed a 50-50 deal, but, which is what I've had. All my publishing deals have been 50-50. That, that was standard for the time. Um, so what that means is that you, you have to mutually agree if you're going to use something. Or some, let's say they wanted to use it for a football game. They wanted to use your song or something. They have to. They write to you uh, just like the my Parmalee track. Even though I only have a percentage of that, I don't have the full rights, but the band... Actually, the band owns all their publishing on that. So, but I'm the only one with a publishing company from that track. So they had to write to me. They always write to me. My publishing company said that they want to use this. They send it to my lawyer, and then I have to agree to. Uh, I have to agree to let them use it if it's for a football game or something. Okay. So then I was thinking about it's like, well, Radiohead, if they own 50% of the song, why, the, why would they agree to do this? Well, the, I th the more I thought about it, well, th they settled with the guys from uh, the guys from the Hollies. So they don't own 50% of it because the Hollies publisher could have said, we want to do this. And, um, and they would have more than 50% uh, if Radiohead's company wanted to do it, and it, maybe it's the same company even, you never know. So um, it, they very easily could have been overruled, and uh, and that's that's how it could have happened. So they may they may not have any say over it, which is really too bad. So um, anyway, so but if if that's the case, they they should have done a more aggressive job with their publicist getting out there and saying, hey, it's our. Um, it's our publishing company. We don't care about this, because I, I you know, ultimately, I think that um, uh, I, I think it's it's bad for their brand to do that. Um, Han thirty six solo says that you had your Hotel California lesson videos blocked for the second time. Uh, that would be Warner Brothers too, I believe. Um, I'm pretty sure about that. I think. Don Henley was on A and M Records with his solo records, but I don't know what the Eagles are on. But um, uh, but they, I'm not sure what the Eagles, what label the Eagles would be on now. Um, but the Eagles are incredibly aggressive about that stuff, really aggressive, just like Zeppelin. Um, Songwriting credits are 50-50 for Radiohead. Four writers total. 
Uh, Geffen was Henley. Okay, that's right. So Geffen would be UMG. Um, Asylum, Geffen, Geffen, Polydor, Lost Highway. Um, I need to be careful with YouTube strikes. Um, I don't think that I got any YouTube strikes on this. I'll tell you what. I'll look here. Let's see here. Let's see if I got one. I don't... They always say, no, you don't have a YouTube strike. Um, hold on one second. Look at, look at my community here. Uh, and it says community or channel. Channel, I think it comes under. Um... Huh. Oh yeah, guidelines, channel guidelines. Status, you have zero community strikes. That's how much, yeah. So I'm all good. What's a YouTube strike? They have a strike. Um, some British dude took one of my videos and played it on his channel. And I, uh, somebody sent it to me and I had it blocked. And so he got a strike. And when you get a strike, you have to go through a uh, some YouTube training seminar thing or something like that. And they uh, they don't mess around with that. UMG does not realize that I am, in fact, a promoter. I know. Um, um, you know, you've seen a little more print stuff on YouTube. Maybe his legal, te legal team is different. Well, now his... Uh, now his estate would um, would make those decisions, I guess. I think his he had a sister, half sister, something like this. They would be making the decisions, depending on what his will was had in it. Um, so what's up, Marcus? So it's um, so yeah, the strike thing. I've never gotten a strike out out of this with any of these things. I mean, the long and short of it is that, is that they just demonetize your video and they give them they give the money to the people that wrote the song, which is totally fine. That's why when you guys chip in a few bucks here, it makes up for me, you know, having my video taken down and stuff. So it's really, you know, it's it's uh, it's really not a uh, to me it's not a big deal. So although. Anybody that wanted to listen to Back in the Saddle again or any of those songs can't listen to them because of that. And it would not have gotten taken down. Um, yes, three strikes, Mariano, and eliminate your channel. Yeah. They don't want to, you know, I, they don't eliminate people's channels that, that, I don't mean this egotistically, but if you have 200,000 subscribers, they're not going to eliminate your channel. I highly doubt it. If they haven't eliminated uh, what what what's his name, Jake Paul, or uh, or what, what's what's his name there that did the Logan Paul, if they haven't eliminated his channel, man, does Nielsen ratings cover YouTube? I don't think so. That's a good question, though, Roberta. No, I'm sure it doesn't. Logan Paul, thank you. You know, um, so speaking of. Logan idiot. <laughs> Go ahead. Feel free to trash him in the comment section, please. I, I love it. Let me see what... what uh... <laughs> uh, Go ahead. Uh, I'll enjoy it here. Uh, I see some French there. I don't know what it means, though. Uh, they mailed me money to participate in Nielsen studies. Is that true, Roberta? YouTube did? Interesting. Logan who? That's right. That's that's really the, the question. <laughs> okay. All right, guy. That's good. There we go. Man, those guys. It's unbelievable. Really unbelievable. Anyway, so... I am getting pretty close to this 200,000 um, that getting to the 200,000 mark. I'm uh, I just checked before I went on. I'm almost at 198,900. I probably will be there by the end of this 
video tonight. So I'm going to have probably 600 and some odd subscribers today. So if I have the same amount tomorrow, I'll be at about 199,500 tomorrow. So that would mean that I will be at 200,000 the day after tomorrow. So um, that's pretty, uh, I always say it's full, legit, correct. Okay, no worries, great. Um, under, oh wait, under the creative tabs in your settings menu, there's a copyright search engine. You can look up policies and stats on the songs you plan to play. Interesting. By the analogy, you lost five subs in the last handful of days. Um, i tell you why. Um, YouTube goes through and, um, and cleans out bots about once a week. And if you don't look at your stats much, you won't notice it, but, uh, but they do do that. They, they clean out um, you know cha channels that are obviously bots. And if you, you guys notice there's been very few bots on here. We, we've had almost no no bots lately. So they've been doing a good job. Uh, guy asked, would YouTube makes a decent part of my income? N no, negligible. Basically, you guys, you know, or people buying my book, my YouTube transcription uh, book, and my two courses. Um... I have, uh, um, how's Iden's music doing? Hold on. I'm going to look. I'm going to look here. Um, not great. It's doing okay. Sold a few, a few videos. You know, that's really frustrating to me because um, because Aiden deserves to sell um, thousands of dollars worth of stuff and it's um, it's disheartening you know and I need to do a better job of uh, of telling people about it. Um, I, I've, uh, you know, I try to get the word out and, um, and, and it's really depressing, honestly. Um, it's really depressing. There's always been people that you know, get pushed for whatever reason that, you know, you see stories on 60 Minutes about people, you see stories here and there, you know, but, uh, but um, I'm going to play some Aiden. There we go. Is Aiden's music accessible to the average music c consumer? No, but that doesn't um, could he make, Joe asked, could he make an, an album of gospel funk? He, you know, Aiden has funk, funk tunes. That's funny. Um, the, the whole reason that Aiden is Aiden is because of, uh, because of, of, uh, if he compromises, what's the point of being him? You know, um, ultimately. But, you know, I mean, how many people are really celebrated in their lifetime, historically? Not many, honestly. Um, but, and it gets worse, you know? I mean, it just gets worse all the time now. The things that are passed off as, as incredible are, uh, you know, I'm going to play some Aiden here. I'm going to play a video. Let me see if I can do this. Okay, uh, I have to move this stuff over here. Then I got to go. Um, 
Let me open one up. Let's see here. Let me figure out if I can. I know I can do this. I'm sure I can do this here. Boom, move this over. Give me a second. But Bach was known. Bach was not very known. Bach was hardly known outside of his t outside of Leipzig. That's the thing is that that very few people knew Bach. Um, it wasn't until Sch uh, Schumann or um, Mendelssohn came along that people started to know know Bach. Okay, what am I gonna play? I'm gonna play some Iden here. Um, let's see here. Um, this is going to be, um, hmm. Okay. This is a, okay. This is from, um, this is from 1987. This is a, uh, an improvisation he did. It was on the day of a concert that, that, uh, we put on and, um, and he improvised all day. This was part of a um, of a series of improvisations. Uh, this was about the tenth one that he did that that day, and he was just starting to get warmed up with this. Um, so I'm going to play it. Let's see if I can get it working here. Okay, you'll see the video here. Hold on, I'm going to move it so you can see the video. Uh, this is Aiden in my apartment, okay? Hold on. Hold on. Let me do it this way. Okay. He was doing a series of... Um, uh, so we had this Kurzweil here hooked up. Hold on, let's see if I can if I can get this to, to hold on. Okay, so you guys can see that, right? We had speakers here. He's sitting next to a speaker, so you can actually hear it. You're, the sound is coming through a speaker, and um, we were recording MIDI of of every one of the improvisations. Okay. Um, so I'm going to play it so you guys can see it, right? Okay, here we go.
Yeah. That was fun. To your ears, it sounds nearly atonal. Um, you're more of a Bill Evans guy. Well, go listen to Bill Evans. Was that me in the back? That is me right there. That was my apartment. If you're a Bill Evans guy, you got plenty of Bill Evans records you can listen to. How's that? You like that? Who is that Bill Evans guy? Where's Bill Evans guy? Braden, you're a Bill Evans guy? Great. Go, uh, go hang out with Bill Evans. There you go. Anyways, all right. <laughs> Let's see here. So much hair back then. I know. Black, too. Um, you'd like to hear the compositions that he, that he made. You heard one of them. What's up, Ray? You'd like to hear one of the compositions. I played you one. Right there. These are, of course, these are improvisations. I'll play another one here. This is one that I played before on here. There you go. There you go, guy. <laughs> you know, all the composers that improvised had thousands of pieces that weren't written down, right? Only the pieces that got written down, you know. Um, but, um, you know, people don't go see Schoenberg concerts. People don't go see, people don't go see jazz. You know, get a number one jazz record, you sell a thousand copies in the United States, 318, 320 million people. And, um, and that's it. That's all you can sell. So I'm, uh, you know, I've developed my channel to, to, for people that are professional musicians. Mariana, what about Martha Argrid? She doesn't write her own music. She's one of the greatest pianists of all time, but she doesn't write her own music. Um, can I enjoy something your ear doesn't understand? Well, of course, you can enjoy things your ear doesn't understand. Um, I mean, do you understand, uh, you know, 
Do you understand Bach fugues? I mean, really understand them? But you can, uh, no, but you can enjoy them. I mean, very few people really understand, unless you're a musicologist or, you know, unless you're Nari and you understand them and you can play them. Is Iden pure jazz? Iden's not jazz at all, really. I mean, kind of. But, um, uh, you know, but this isn't about, um, this isn't about doing things with, um, You like microtonal stuff, but you can't identify with all the weird intervals. You like microtonal stuff, but you can't identify with weird intervals. Okay, that makes sense. Not. Um, what would I call it? Um, I'm not sure what I would call it because I've never heard anything like it. That's, that's what I would call it. I'd call it something that I've never heard anything like. Um, no, yeah, I can do a video about Thelonious Monk, but we're not talking about Thelonious Monk right now. How's that? How's that? It's not experimental, Joe. There's nothing experimenting about that. That's improvisation. It's incredibly well, well thought out. It's not Cecil, Tal Cecil Taylor-ish. Um... No, I can't identify the variety of unfamiliar intervals, okay? Um, what's the stream topic? The stream topic, topic is what we're talking about right now. Um, Martin, I heard that Argridge began piano by listening to her sister, Uh, sister courses through the door. Is that right? I have no idea about that. I didn't know that Martha had a sister. Um, straight to the point. You mean me? You know, people shouldn't do like why? Why should art? Why should an artist have to adapt their style? Uh, for people to understand it. You know, people walked out of the right of spring because they didn't understand it. They walked out. Go read the go read the uh, accounts of this thing. They thought it was noise. They walked out of it. They walked out of Beethoven's concerts. They didn't know what it was because he was writing things that people had never heard before. Tristan too. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm real. That's right, Kinch. You're you're totally right. Honestly, the piece you played felt more thought of, less improv and show of skills to how fast his mind works. Guy, get get out of here. Get out of here. Debussy dealt with that. Oh, every composer that was ahead of their time dealt with that, you know? I mean, that's that's really... Um, that is really the, uh, you know, ultimately what... That's what art's all about, you know? That's what artists are about, real artists. Anybody that pushes the envelope. Um, anybody that pushes the envelope gets, uh, you know, gets, gets, gets ignored typically. Ignored by a few people. Um, I mean, you, pretty much every composer that you're mentioning, Mahler, I mean, all these people. Who is, who is you know... May, was famous in their lifetime. I mean, Beethoven was famous, but, you know, most of these people, you didn't know anything. You, don't know, you didn't know anything about. So, <laughs> catch yourself outside. <laughs> Liszt was famous. He was. You know why he was famous? Because he was a virtuoso. 
That's why. He was a showman. He turned the piano sideways to the, so the audience could see him. You know? Um... Matheny got famous and pushed the envelope. He did. He did get famous. You know why he got famous? Because he uh, because he played a lot simpler music. He didn't get famous with Bright Size Life. It sold 900 copies. That's uh, that's read the read the articles about Matheny. It wasn't until he did the White Album he started to do to pretend like he was a rock band. He had a light show. I saw him back then. I saw him in the in the in the seventies. He had a light show. He owned his own PA system. Um, you know, so he had his hair. He wore striped shirts. He wore Converse All Stars. Matheny had an image, and he wrote very simplistic music that he improvised over. He played. He was an incredible improviser, but most of his pieces that be, that he became known for at the time were songs like Phase Dance, you know? And uh, and a lot of the, you know, Matheny stuff, like American Garage, was not nearly as musically interesting as, uh, as the first album was. Um, I mean, he was a rock star. He really was. How would you transcribe all those key changes in Iden's music? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Is Iden a genius in other areas as well? Does he need to be? <laughs> I mean, Justin, are you a genius in other areas? Uh, you know. Marcus, when was the first time I realized Iden was something? When I first heard him. I like this, Aaron. Hindemith was correct when he said, music is meaningless noise unless it touches a receiving mind. It's troubling there aren't more people receptive to new ideas. Thank you. That is one of the best... I'm going to I'm gonna take this one right out of here. I do this occasionally when I hear... When I read something that I... That is... Uh, when I read something that, that's really well, well thought out here. I'm putting that in my... In my chart. That's what I like to read right there. Phase dance is actually quite boring as a composition. And this is from a Matheny fan. There you go. Let's see. You would get Steve Steve, Steve Vai to transcribe that for you? No. You know, nobody could transcribe that. Well, actually, that's not true. Iden could transcribe that. Iden wouldn't want to transcribe that. Um, you know, you have to have a receptive mind. And... What I like to think is that I've cultivated 200,000 people with receptive minds. But it's probably not that. It's probably, you know, 50,000 people with receptive minds. And then other people that like it because I get, you know, get mad at Apple. Or or I teach them things that they want want to know, you know. And I'm, I'm happily, I'm happy to, to do it. Um... And I'm happy that people have have open minds to learn. And um, and and that's uh, you know that's really um, you know that's um, my most. <laughs> Lamelight says your most viewed video is your Apple video. That's quite sad. No, it's not sad. What's sad about that? It's it's uh, you know people like to be outraged. Um, it's not surprising. You know what though? My my third biggest video is one of my weirdest ones, the double harmonic major scale, with almost four hundred thousand. It'll hit four hundred thousand views in the next couple weeks. So. You know, it's got a quarter of the Apple things, and Apple's the biggest company in the world. So, uh, you know, the fact that I have a video that is completely weird, um, that has, I talk about a scale with 48 chords in it, and it has a completely weird atonal piece, 
or, or it's tonal really, it only uses seven notes. Uh, it's in one to it's in one key. But uh, you know, it's not nearly as melodic as what Iden just played there. It's much weirder, and I've got four hundred thousand views. So so what what does that say? You know, uh, so the the fact that my Apple video has over a million views is uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing because people can come to um, people come to my channel because of things like that. And discover, oh, this is a music channel. Wow, there's, you know, 400 videos on here. Uh, you know, and I, I come on here every night because, um, uh, because you guys are receptive. And it's, um, and it's, uh, you know, and and it does it does bum me out too when um when people are closed minded it really is you know do you think there's something to be said about people saying they like Iden's music and agreeing that he's a genius and you find out his stuff and videos are not doing well no i mean because i you know no because uh No, I don't. Um, I mean, yes, of course I find it depressing. Yes, I do. I do, but I don't find it surprising. I guess it's, it's, I, it's kind of two different things. Um, thank you, Joel. Um, and I think that, uh, I think that, that, that people, um, you know, look, I'm always striving to learn things every day. You know, I was mad at myself last night that I forgot that C8 was 4186.01 hertz. I get mad when I don't get things right. So, uh, you know... The Apple video had so many views that showed up to me and I watched a video from you and Adam, you led me to a path of cool music. I have no opinion on Apple. People are looking for what they can identify with. Um, of course, people are looking for what they identify with. That's why people tend to not listen to any new music after about 25. Um, let's see. I took the Iden line you posted and learned it on my bass and a lot of keys. There you go. Ray, it's one, it's all about the bell curve. Those of you that can understand and relate to high information music are at the small right edge of the bell curve. You know, thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. You can strive for perfection, body knowledge. You can strive for perfection, but can't always expect perfection. Um, you know, that piece, that improvisation that Iden did, I've been listening to for 31 years now, almost 30, well, 30 years. And, you know, I never heard anything like that in the 30 years, in the 30 years since, never. Um, but you have to realize that a lot of these, you know, concepts that I'm talking about are, you know, are things that Iden did 30 years ago. I always thought of this as just the beginning of kind of, of getting to this, you know, of, of this is just the kind of the baseline of, of knowledge. All the 400 videos I've made so far. Um, so, um, I, and and I think that uh, you know, and when I see a, a comment on 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 one of Iden's videos, I get offended. I do, and I get rid of those people. Boom, gone. Uh, so. 
so do I still have the MIDI? No. I learned that I know way less than I thought after watching your videos. <laughs> um, I'm going to play another Iden piece. Okay, this is this string quartet that Iden improvised. Okay, this will be more melodic. This is from 86. Um, I played it, I think, once before, but I don't know if I played the whole thing. Okay, so this is just a one. Um, this is just one pass. Uh, I don't have video of it, but I'm going to play it. And because it's beautiful. If I was Iden's guardian angel or patron saint, I mean, I wish I could be, you know, I wish I was Manfred Eicher to, to, uh, to uh, you know, Keith Jarrett, but I'm not. I don't, I'm not a wealthy, uh, you know, label owner that was able to uh, um, you know uh, um, that was able to record anything that you know I mean Keith Jarrett anything Keith Jarrett wanted to record Manfred Eicher would not only record he'd have orchestras play the stuff he paid for it all he had Keith Jarrett play the well-tempered clavier which he probably never should have done um, and whatever he wanted to do, whatever whim he, he had, uh, it was indulged. Okay. So here is a, um, this is an improvised string quartet basically that Iden did. This is 1986 and, um, it's, uh, you can listen to it. How old is Aiden? Aiden is two weeks younger than me. He's 55. Okay, so here we go.
There you go. Nineteen eighty-six. So he improvised that. Um, he improvised that in front of Ray Kurzweil and Bob Moog, trying out a new Kurzweil um, sound bank. So it was all the people from Kurzweil in this in this small little auditorium that they had. It wasn't really an auditorium, it was a room. And, um, I mean, that's just unbelievable. Uh, I mean, who improvises like that? Um... I actually transcribed that piece. Um, what did Berkeley think about Iden? Um, Iden was only at Berkeley for a year. He tested out all of his classes, and then uh, and uh, and that was it. So um, I mean, Iden was was uh, you know. That's what Iden was back then. That's right after Berkeley. 1986, he was 20, you know, 23, 24 there. Just a kid, you know? So, um, Your age, Sergio. Um, now, Iden, if he heard that, he'd be like, oh, that's, that's nothing. It's a joke. What do they think of his test on the keyboard? They were just... They... Uh, he, he couldn't believe it. What would you say if you sat there and watched that, you know? I mean, that was just a... a uh, Anyone saw Rick's proud smile and say he transcribed this? I transcribed it 30 years ago. So, um, I just found it actually recently. Did Bob Moog and Ray Kurzweil say anything after they heard that? Yeah, they never heard anything like it, they said. Um, you know... Look, Aiden was signed to Columbia Records. It's not like Aiden was unknown or anything. He won this, you know, uh, world jazz piano competition in Paris in 1989. I mean, it wasn't like Aiden was was uh, is was completely an unknown artist or anything. And uh, you know, but really, the 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 stuff that Aiden does, um, I mean, Aiden had a hundred and eighty thousand dollar record deal with Columbia Records, the biggest record company at the time. So, um, pass it on to Nari, the transcription. No, I have a transcription I did for string quartet. I, uh, I didn't do a transcription for piano. I mean, I guess I could have, but, um, but, you know, it's, um, um, you know, people don't, uh, did I didn't die? No, I did not die. Um, so I didn't did the one record, which is on his website. You can buy it's on I didn't and And, um, and they didn't know what to do with it, you know? It was, um, it was, um, it just had tunes that they didn't know what to do with. Has a quartet ever tried to play it? No. No, because I never, um, after I transcribed it, I quit teaching 
college and uh, and I moved on to playing in rock bands and got uh, and went into music production. So I didn't know anyone to play it. Um, I didn't. Yes, he's been on Sounding Off. Um, he should see Hans Zimmer. Um, well, you know, Marcus, the uh, the thing about the masses, I mean, this isn't music for the masses, you know? Uh, you know what music for the masses is. It's, uh, it's, uh, what's the tune with 4.5 billion views on YouTube? That's music for the masses, stuff with Justin Bieber in it. Um... What is life like for Aiden now? Aiden teaches in Switzerland at a college a couple few days a month, and he lives in Istanbul. Um, he wasn't marketable. Yeah, Despacito. Thank you, Nathan, very much for that. Um, is Aiden happy staying undiscovered? Of course not. Who wants to be undiscovered? You know? You know... You know, I, I think about this that, uh, and I've, you know, I make video, I've made videos about this stuff that, that, um, you know, this YouTube channel changed my life. Everybody here that I'm talking to, um, changed my life in an incredible way. The, the things that I talk about on here, I've known for for years, you know, well, well more than half my life. But I never had an outlet for it. Just like there was no string quartet to play the transcription I did of Iden's music, there was no one to sell my Beato book to except for my students, which is why I wrote it. Because there was nothing to, there was no textbook back then. There was nothing. Um, you know, who wants to remain undiscovered? Never mind productions. Kurt Cobain. You're right. No, who, I mean, really, who wants to remain? People don't want to remain un, undiscovered. Um, I'm trying to let you guys know about Aiden by playing th things, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, and I don't care if, if people, if it's, if it's too weird for some people. That doesn't matter to me, you know? You, sh you need to hear it. That's why I play it, because it's important. If it wasn't important, I wouldn't play it. That's why I get on uh, here and spend my time making videos for people that anyone in the world that has an internet connection can hear. And, um, and it's... Um, you know, it's weird. Joel says, get Aiden to start his own YouTube channel. You know, the thing is, it takes a certain kind of person to do something like that. Aiden does not live in this country. Otherwise, if he did, I made him a website to sell music through. Um, and, uh, you know, but not everybody can make videos. That's There's a special talent to this. Nari, you know... She, what Nari just said, all the knowledge sharing. Th thank you, Nari. Um, but Nari is an example. Nari is, is a phenomenal, you know, gifted musician that went to Juilliard. But unlike other people at Juilliard, she's incredibly creative. Or not like other people. I'm sure there's plenty of creative people. But she's exceptionally creative. And she knows how to make videos. And she only has 5,000 subscribers now, or, or closing in on 5,000. But she deserves to have 100,000, 200,000, half a million. You know, people, I see people in the comments section of her thing. I can't believe you don't have more subscribers. People say that to her. Why do your videos have no views? A thousand views only. Why? Why? Well, people used to say that about my videos. Um... But Nari's able to make her own videos, and she's incredibly creative at it, you know? But Aiden, you know what's funny is that Aiden's actually an excellent photographer. 
that's the ironic thing is that he's actually he's actually really a photographer. That's uh, that's the, the the irony of this. Just like Nari's a really a photographer, must be something about that. Uh, uh, you know, about people that are super creative too, right? That uh, well, I can't, I don't put myself in that category of, of being a photographer. You guys have all seen my video work. Um, strictly uh, informational at most. Um, but it takes a certain kind of person to make these kind of videos and put themselves out there. And you need to have... Um, you know, there's, a, there's an incredible learning curve. If I didn't have... Um, if I didn't have people here, like my assistant, Ken, that you guys met or, you know, Michelle and Aaron to help me out, I would never have been able to do this. And Rhett, if Rhett wasn't here to tell me to do this, I would not have done this. Never. Not in a million years. Um, how would I, you know, I mean, I never would have made a YouTube channel. It would never, it was, I never even thought about making a YouTube channel. It's, um, you know, it's just not anything that, that occurred to me. Um, so, um, you know, but you know, I, I, I used to get comments on my channel from people, you know, rude comments or whatever. And I just block the people, you know, get rid of them. And it's like, Hey, it used to be on Facebook really. And it'd be like, Hey, this is my channel. I'll put on what I want. You know, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. And I would write that and I block them and get rid of them. That's why I got off Facebook. <laughs> Mariana, where can you find Aiden's music? Go to AidenSMusic.com. I'm gradually putting stuff up there, whatever Aiden lets me put up there. Um, and this is an incredible commitment to do this, you know? It takes, you know, in order to, to you can't make any money doing this. That's the thing. I mean, Aiden can't make a living doing this, going to YouTube. You know, I mean, I'm lucky that I'm, that I'm, um, you know, I don't rely on views. If I relied on views, I wouldn't be making any videos. I'd be producing still. If it wasn't people buying my book, you know, and buying my courses or buying my record on my website, I wouldn't be sitting here right now talking to you guys. I mean, that's the God honest truth right there. You know, it's not that I wouldn't want to be. I just wouldn't be able to. I'd be in some crappy session all day with something I didn't like to put food on the table for my family, you know? Um, and that's the, uh, you know, and that's the reality of it. Um, that That is the reality of it. Thank you, Joe, for putting that up there. Um, but, you know, if I can, if I can promote Aiden this way, I'll do it. I don't care about, you know, like I'm, I promote myself enough. You know, I promote other people too. As you can see, I talk about other artists that are important. I do interviews with people on Sounding Off, people that I feel are important to know about. Um, you know, when people do uh, these collaborations with other YouTubers, you know, I don't care if somebody has, like Nari, when we did our, you know, I had her on my channel and she had a thousand subscribers. Well, her channel is amazing. I don't care that it has a thousand subscribers. I know eventually it's going to have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. You know, and but when I see those comments on her, you know, when I when she puts out a video and I go, go I look, read the comments and they say, you know, I can't believe that there's only this many views or you only have this many subscribers. Yeah, well, everybody starts out at none. That's the thing. Um. Uh, you sent me an email, the lame lord. You sent me an email about Reddit AMA. Oh, you know, I just forget about these things. You got to keep, um, you got to keep, uh, you got to keep reminding me. I get, you know, 
Um, I said I wasn't going to come online on Sunday, SB. I said that because I forgot that Monday's a holiday. And uh, um, so the kids were up. So they're up doing stuff. They're, they're Well, they're not up now, I'm sure. But that's why I, um, uh, that's why I did that. Uh, you know, so has Iden done any film scoring? No. You know, you have to have a certain... I mean, he's been living in Turkey bringing up his kids... You know, he's been married for 30-some-odd years. He's been bringing up his kids. His youngest son is a freshman at Berkeley right now. He's got, he's got, two, uh, he's got two kids. And, uh, you know, having to make a living doing that. So, anyways, um... What is this? Who's this? Noah? My God, wait a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a second. Where is he? Hold on a second. Okay. Boom! Gone. You're dead to us. Thank you, Kinch, for uh, for bringing that uh, to my attention. Um, Jari, what's up? You always appear somewhere, man. Um, Berkeley should hire me to start their own master's degree, their ma online master's degree. Do you teach at Berkeley, David? <laughs> He's swimming with the fishes, Joe. <laughs> Berkeley should uh, hire me to come up and do a do a, a clinic there. We I mean, start there instead of doing the master's program. There's one in every crowd. There's always one in every crowd. You know, it's surprising that there's actually not many people. Uh, there's hardly any in this crowd. Um, all right, I should teach at Juilliard. I'll I'll go up and do a do a clinic there too. I don't want to. I don't I don't. Uh, um, I don't I don't want to be teaching anywhere but here, in my own studio. This is uh, I can reach everybody in the world through here. I mean, think about this. The um, the um, see you, Martin. Kinch, they pay uh, yeah, 173 bucks for six hours of more time. That's 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 about right. Um, the our, the Beato Clinic is right here. That's exactly correct. That is exactly correct. This is where it, this is where it happens, and and anybody can watch it anywhere, anytime. Um. So thank you, Christopher. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, anyways, just rewatch The Godfather 3 after 27 years. Not a fan. I know, Godfather 3. Can't do it. Should have stopped at 2. Juan, what do you think people like you like distances better than constants? That some people like distances. Um, you know, the more things you're exposed to, the more dissonance you're exposed to, the more it sounds normal to you. Um, that's, that's really, um, uh, please send me another, another email about that, about the AMA. Um, um, anyways, I'm going to go for tonight. This has been great. This has been great. This is a good time to stop here. Um, I'm going to do my sign off. I can't, when I stop streaming, I'm, I'm going to stop right now. Um, I'm going to stop now, but I don't know when I hit the stop streaming button, it, it does it really abruptly. So thank all of you. And I'm going to be quiet for a second and then I'm going to stop streaming. <laughs>